We're here today with legendary comic book writer Tony Isabella, well known for his works on Ghost Rider, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. He's going to tell us, and he's also brought the champions together. He's going to tell us a little bit about his uh, comic book, uh, Black Lightning. He's the creator of it. Tell us a little bit about it, about, uh, about how it came to be. Well, Black Lightning came about because of my innate sense of fairness in a world that doesn't usually provide fairness. My first black friends were comic book fans, uh, and it just struck me as manifestly unfair that there weren't more characters in the comics that reflected them. So I was very excited when Marvel did Luke Cage, and I knew that if I ever got into comics, I wanted to create diverse characters. Um, as it turned out, I, at Mar when I went to work for Marvel, I at various times wrote Luke Cage. I created a character called Misty Knight in the Iron Fist book, who's gone on to become a very popular character, mostly due to Chris Claremont and John Byrne doing the heavy lifting on her, because I didn't write too many stories with her. Uh, I took a character called uh, Bill Foster and tried to turn him into the new giant man. I wasn't allowed to call him Giant Man, so he ended up being Black Goliath, which was okay, because it was the 70s, and, and there was a big market for black films, and they, you know, black, yellow, uh, movies like that. Um, went over to DC, uh, where I took everything I had learned from writing these characters at Marvel, and created a character, I wanted to create a positive role model who would be somebody that younger readers could relate to, which is why he was a school teacher, because every kid knows what a teacher is. Uh, I placed him in the inner city of Metropolis because, you know, I grew up not in an inner city per se, but I grew up in, in a, you know, basically kind of rough neighborhood, and those were the stories I wanted to tell. Uh, I had lost friends even at that young age. I had lost friends to drug use. Uh, I had known gangsters, I had seen people hurt by organized crime, so those were the stories I wanted to tell within a superhero setting. So that's basically how Black Lightning came about. I, you know, I wanted to do a character that my black friends would enjoy, a character that people could relate to, uh, even though the character's publishing history has been spotty, uh, he is revered by the black fans and, and black uh, creators and, and other fans. Uh, about once a year I go to the East Coast Black Age of Comics Convention, which is a nonprofit convention uh, that is based around characters of color, creators of color, and people who do characters of color. Uh, and uh, very frequently, their only white guest, their, their guest poster looks like the Black Brady Bunch and their white friend. Uh, but it's a very supportive community. I go there and, and they show me such love and respect for what I've done. Uh, I get to see new styles and things like that. So it's an important show for me to do every year. Um, and that's the way it's gone. Black Lightning has had an impact well beyond you know, his appearances in comic books. Readers have written me and told me they became school teachers because of Black Lightning. Uh, the most decorated police officer in San Francisco told me that he did not follow the same path as his friends in the inner cities there uh, because of superheroes like Black Lightning who inspired him. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to have created this character and, and I try always to be worthy of the respect shown this character. There were a lot of problems between DC and myself over the years, and I won't go into detail on those, but there's new management at DC Comics. They have reached out to me. We are very close to settling our past differences. They've already reprinted my first Black Lightning series. It's on sale now, and I wrote a new introduction for it. Uh, I never thought that I would ever write anything for DC again. I never thought they'd reprint my Black Lightning uh, stories. Uh, they have great respect for the character. They have respect for me. 
And I'm hoping that before the end of the year, there will be some really good news for Black Lightning fans. Okay. So I've noticed that Black Lightning has a lot of similarities to Stag Shock. Do you think he influenced Stag um, Shock? Yes and no. I mean, I know that a lot of people thought of, of people who worked on at Milestone thought of Static Shock as kind of Black Lightning 2.0. Uh, I know that the people at Milestone had great respect for the most part, not everybody, but most of the people working on Milestone Comics had great respect for Black Lightning and my own work. Uh, I was friends with Dwayne McDuffie, uh, who was one of the creators of Static. Uh, and, you know, so I, I never felt anything other than, I shouldn't say any ever, but for the most part, yeah, the Milestone uh, people liked Black Lightning. And the Static Shock is obviously not Jefferson Pierce. He's a teenager. Uh, he comes from a different family setup. He lived in a different kind of community than Black Lightning lived in. Uh, but it's a great character. I love Static. I love the Static Shock cartoon show. Uh, at one point, they wanted to guest star Black Lightning in it, and DC, the, this is the previous management of DC, refused to let them use Black Lightning on Static Shock. So the episode was rewritten and ended up featuring a character called Soul Power. Um, they wanted to use uh, Black Lightning in Justice League Unlimited. Again, DC said no. Uh, you won't see that happening again now because the current management really does like Black Lightning. They want to, you know, like me, they want Black Lightning to move up to the next level. And... Uh, I'm hoping things work out that I am a part of that. Uh, and I know that DC would like me to be a part of it. We're just working through a process, but, you know, I, I really enjoy my... The interactions I've had with DC since they reached out to me last year have all been great. Uh, I love uh, talking to and working with Jeff Johns and Dan DiDio, uh, the trade paperback department, and other people at DC. I've really enjoyed working with them. Lawyers, not quite so much, but that's what lawyers are there for. I have my lawyer, they have their lawyer, they'll work it out. Uh, I think we're all on the same page that we want to work it out. Are you excited to see your creation, Misty Knight, and upcoming Luke yeah, Cage I am. Netflix series? Yeah, I am. Now, Marvel, I would say Marvel's always been real swell to me. Uh, I don't write for them anymore except for the occasional introduction to one of their reprint books. I don't know if I could fit in with their current style of writing. But they've always treated me with respect. They've always paid me quickly when they've reprinted my stuff. Uh, in in past years, their people have like called me up to ask questions about stuff I did, you know, 40 years ago. Uh, so I, yeah, I'm excited about it. I know that I will get a you know a piece of the pie because uh, they've been very good about that. So yeah, I'm excited about it. Uh, as I said, I created Misty Knight. Uh, she became something other than what I originally intended. Not that that was a bad thing. I mean, they've done wonderful things with Misty Knight. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited. All right. Again, we are here with Tony Isabella, legendary comic book writer. If you'd like to know more about Tony or check out his work, all links will be posted in the description. Thank you very much. Let the fall asleep My demons will kill me dead I don't want to fall apart I'm already gone Think to myself